What the flip is up, Tube Nation? I'm in a car. This is not my car. Um, I am completely perplexed by the situation that I am in right now. I just cannot believe the past 48 hours are happening right now. Where am I going? How do I get out of this neighborhood? I'm in Oregon right now, by the way, for Katie, my best friend's birthday. She turned 25. Happy birthday, Katie and I'm really happy to be back home. But the past 48 hours, y'all, just a constant state of what the fuck. I don't know what I did to God, but God is not happy with me. He just keeps throwing these curveballs in my face every day this week. Let me just explain what has happened to me. And also I know that the world is going through a lot right now, bigger issues than this, but I am in complaint mode. I know that like my last video was me also pretty much complaining the entire time. This video is gonna be another one of those. Just cause like, what the fuck? And I feel like everything that's happened to me is pretty valid to complain about, okay? Whatever. I just need to let this energy out somewhere and you guys will listen to me, I hope. Don't click out of this. Y'all are just clicking out right now. Before we get started, I do want to thank this week's sponsorship, which is Hopper. Hopper is a free travel app for Android and iOS that leverages data-driven technology to help over 60 million travelers lock in the best prices for hotels, flight tickets, or rent a car. Hopper will show you the cheapest days to travel. No hidden fees, no stress, just accurate predictions and travel deals. And look how easy it is, you guys. All you gotta do is use the color-coded deals calendar and you can easily find the cheapest travel dates for your trip and if you're not ready to book right away you can select watch a trip and Hopper will monitor prices 24 seven and do the work for you. Their price prediction technology predicts the future prices of travel with 95% accuracy and you will be notified instantly when it's the right time for you to buy. It's like having your own personal handheld concierge. It's so convenient. I just used Hopper a few weeks ago because it's my best friend's birthday and I wanna go hang out with her on her birthday. She lives in Oregon. It sliced off like a few hundred dollars for a round trip and I'm so excited and it was super last minute too so I was like oh my god flights are gonna be so expensive but with Hopper they gave me a great deal and I'm so thankful and I can't wait to party with my bestie. Use the link in my description box to download Hopper and receive your first $10 carrot cash reward on me. Okay, this reward can be applied to your first hotel booking on the app. So make sure you use my unique link down below in order to get your nubby little hands on this awesome deal. Yes, I said nubby. Go wash your hands. Thank you, Hopper, so much for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. Take it away, future Sarah. Let's start from the very beginning. So I have been planning to come to Oregon for Katie's birthday for a while, like a few months. I had my tickets booked very excited to be here for Katie's birthday. My dad texted me a few weeks ago. He was like, hey, while you are in Oregon, I'm gonna actually be in LA because one of his friends died, RIP, my dad's friend. But my dad's going to a funeral or like a memorial service in LA. And he was like, is it okay if I stay at you and Christelle's apartment while you're in Oregon? And I was like, yeah, of course. I'll clean it up for you. I'll make it really nice. Um, so that was the plan last weekend and I could tell that I was like getting kind of sick and obviously I'm freaking out because I'm like COVID hello I don't want COVID and I was really freaking out because I knew that I was going to Oregon I got a COVID test waited a few days my test came back negative but at this point I'm like sick what the hell is happening do I just have cold like Huh? Because I didn't have a fever either, so. But then I was like, I'm gonna take another COVID test just in case that one was inaccurate. So I went and I took another COVID test just to be sure. That one also came back negative. And I'm like, okay, so I definitely don't have COVID. I have a cold. I don't remember the last time I've gotten a cold. Like, that doesn't really happen. But that, not yesterday. The day before yesterday. The day before I am supposed to leave for Oregon. And I woke up that morning to this musty, foul scent 
in my nostrils. My nostrils became very overwhelmed. Where am I right now? All I see is tractors and dirt. I'm not going the right way. So yeah, I wake up and it's foul. It smells like a dead, rotting animal is in my bed. Just horrified by this stench. At first I was like, did I pee the bed? But then also the smell, it was more pungent than urine, almost like fecal matter. So then the next thought that I had was, did I poop the bed? Is that even a thing? Did I genuinely poop my pants? Do I even have the courage and the mental strength to look and see if I pooped my bed as a 24 year old woman? Um, but I'm like, I have to figure this out. I took my sheets off, no poop. Thank God, didn't poop my pants. And then I smelled my sheets, foul, I gagged. And so I'm like, oh my God, is this just my sweat? I took my sheets off because I was like, I'm gonna wash my sheets. Ew, this stench is horrifying. Every single time I took a layer off, it smelled worse. So the stench was deeper and deeper within. So I'm like, why is there an animal rotting in my bed? I was so scared. I was like, is there a rat? It kind of smelled like rat. I don't know. I was like, is there a dead rat in my mattress? That is my worst nightmare. I'm so afraid of rats. Ugh. The stench is getting worse. I'm like plugging my nose. I take off the final sheet to look at my bare mattress in its natural state and y'all, speckles too. I don't know what that is. I assume that it was mold, but it also looked like tiny little bugs. Did I have bed bugs? And for how long? Oh my god. For how long was I sleeping in that? That's disgusting. So then I went on Reddit, right? Because I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Do I throw out my mattress? I was horrified. I went on Reddit. I was like, how did this happen? And a lot, I'm in the, I'm in the bed mold community now on Reddit. And everyone was saying like, it's super common for this to happen if you have a memory foam on your bed, because apparently that absorbs all of your sweat. And if you spilled something on your bed, it'll seep through that shit really easily. And I'm like, yeah, I have a memory foam, but I didn't spill anything. Is that just like from my sweat? How did that even happen, y'all? A lot of people were just saying that you don't have to toss out the whole mattress. You don't have to toss out the whole mattress and that you can just get baking soda and a bunch of shit to just clean it. But I'm like, uh-uh. My daddy is coming to my apartment in a few days to stay at my house. I'm not just, like, it was just like, it was not okay. And I didn't want my dad to be just around the aroma of that mattress. It was vile. Um, and everybody was saying that this is common or whatever. And that, ah! Cause I'm like, where's the poop smell coming from? It smelled like feces, y'all. Like poop. And a lot of people were saying like, if you have bed bugs, the bed bugs poop all over their beds too. It's like a mixture of bed bugs and shit. Like was that black mold or was that bed bugs and poop? I don't know. I removed the mattress. I got it out of my apartment. So I don't have a bed. I think that definitely explains me getting sick. I think I was just breathing in mold for God knows how long because I clean my sheets every week. I need to be in clean sheets with shaved legs. Rub my legs together in the sheets. While I think I'm being clean and sanitary and safe, I'm just sleeping on mold? Ew. And is that why I got Hashimoto's? Because I've been breathing in mold? Like my doctor asked me, like, was I ever exposed to mold? I was like, no doc, I haven't. 
have I been this entire time? And this is why I've been feeling like shit. So many fucking questions. So this is just the first part of the story, right? It's so ironic because the day before that, I was in my car blasting music and I was in a DMX vibe. I loved DMX as a kid. Me and my sister always listened to DMX. RIP. But there's a specific song me and my sister loved. So we were also little Christian kids who loved Jesus. And DMX has this song called Lord Give Me a Sign. If you haven't heard that song, listen to it. It's so fucking good. But <laughs> I was in my car driving and I'm blasting, Lord, give me a sign. I really need to talk to you, Lord, but the last time I talked, the walk has been hard. In the name of Jesus. Like I was screaming that and I put that shit on replay. I was talking to the Lord. I like know a lot of the verses too. So I was like rapping and it's kind of like a prayer in a way. So I'm also just kind of like praying to the universe. Like someone give me a sign. I felt like I had a great conversation with God or whoever. And then this happened that night. Like then the morning I woke up to that stench. So I'm like, is this the sign from the Lord that I asked for about like my health? I don't know. I'm gonna tell my doctor about it. And also, okay, I just want to address my last video. The support on that video has been so overwhelming and sweet and I just feel so cared for and loved by y'all. A lot of you guys thought that my doctor was sketchy. That's so valid, very valid. Um, I get it, especially because he was talking about like me going on his plan for the next few months and like signing up for his plan and that it was gonna cost a bunch of money. Um, but I do want you guys to know that conversation was like 30 something minutes and I condensed the conversation down to like what, three to five minutes. There's so much shit that was said that I cut out. So in those few minutes of me talking to my doctor, it kind of looks like he is an asshole, but he's also a functional doctor. So what that means is he doesn't take insurance and it's more of like a holistic approach. So instead of just prescribing me a medication for my thyroid or for something, he goes into the approach of doing alternative holistic stuff so like changing my diet putting me on supplements and stuff and so oh it's so fucking hot sorry i had to go into the mall really quick i was mid thought to like mid conversation and i'm like i should go into the mall right now but to finish that thought like i said it costs money every single time to go see him since he doesn't take insurance and because he's a functional doctor and has the holistic approach he also has his own program and his own um healing method and program and stuff and yeah it's a lot of money i don't know if i'm gonna go that route i might try to see an endocrinologist instead someone who actually specializes the thyroid i don't know if i said that word right so so yeah that's kind of the update i definitely understand how it seemed like a scam but i also told my doctor to be upfront with me about money like my first visit with him i'm like i want you to tell me how much things cost like i don't want you to just sign me up for stuff and then I get a bill in the mail later and it's a lot of money like I want you to tell me straight up so I knew he was gonna tell me the cost of the treatment especially since I knew that he had his own program and his own way of doing these things so I'm really glad that he told me how much money it was and I liked his honesty and I liked that he was straight up about it yes I was crying during that visit and like it did come on kind of strong but also remember that that was like a 30 something minute conversation and I had to cut it down into a few minutes but I I also I watched it back once I read the comments and it's and I can so see where it seems like kind of sketchy yeah a lot of you guys were saying that he was using scare tactics probably but also I kind of just put in the snippet where he was talking about my thyroid but a lot of the other things on my test were not good so that's kind of why he was a little bit more concerned than usual yeah it did scare me and I I genuinely don't think that he was being manipulative or trying to scare me into doing his program I think that he was just genuinely a little bit concerned like I said I don't know if I'm gonna go that route I'm definitely gonna get a second opinion a lot of you guys told me to do that and I agree like I definitely want other opinions from other doctors so I'm gonna schedule an 
endocrino, I can't say that word. I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. So now that we have that out of the way, I wanna fucking talk about what happened to me after that. So I was dealing with my moldy bed situation, right? Clean the rest of my house, I had to order a new mattress, I had to pack, I had to edit a little bit. This was the night before I had to leave. And I didn't wanna sleep on the couch because there's lots of cat fur and I think I'm kind of allergic to Benito slightly. I just had no energy to vacuum the entire couch. What I did was, is I took two of the couch cushions, vacuumed them, and put them on my bed frame. And so I just slept on the two cushion things, but my entire body filled it up, so I wasn't like dangling off of it. And um, it wasn't comfortable. I, d I don't know why I cannot sleep on my couch. And I cannot sleep, y'all. My anxiety was through the roof because I knew that I had to wake up early for my flight, but I also just more things that I had to deal with that I didn't get done, but it was also like three in the morning and I'm like, I need to try to get some sleep. But I couldn't even sleep. My mind was racing and I was just thinking about all the things that I had to do. I tossed and turned, laid there aimlessly, didn't get a wink of sleep. It was like 7.30 in the morning and I was still laying there awake. Just like, fuck my life. I have to be up in an hour anyway. Is it even worth it to sleep for an hour? Will I accidentally sleep through my alarm? So I'm like, I'm just gonna stay awake. So I pulled an all-nighter, which was so annoying. <sighs> and y'all! I don't know if y'all have ever pulled an all-nighter, but when you do, you get in a hallucinated state of mind where you just feel like you're dreaming. It's like a dreamlike state. I'm like, fuck, I'm seeing Katie tonight. Like, she's literally supposed to pick me up from the airport. She's having people come over to her house. And I'm sick, but I don't have COVID. I checked twice. I don't have COVID, y'all, so don't roast me. And I'm freaking out about my bed because my dad has to like set up a bed for me while he's here. Like he can't just go into my apartment and just relax and lay down after his 15 hour drive because he's driving to LA and then get to my apartment and set up my bed for me so he can sleep somewhere. I don't know. I was just thinking about all of that too. And I was just kind of stressing yesterday, but I made it to the airport. I checked my big ass luggage in, right? I had to pay 50 bucks because it was a heavy bag because I brought a lot of stuff. So I paid $50 and I think that Allegiant, like I understand that Allegiant Airlines is the cheap one. It's the cheap airlines, but also that was the only flight available from LAX to the city that I'm in. I went on this Allegiant flight and I've heard horror stories about Allegiant. They're a little bit problematic because they're so cheap. They just kind of don't care about in your experience because they're like, well, you got a cheap ticket, so what did you expect? Kind of like manage your expectations type of thing. So I knew that, but I didn't think that they were gonna be this shitty. And I say that because I checked my bag in. And mind you, I am an hour and a half early from the boarding time. I got to the LAX airport early because I know how LAX is and I know how traffic is and I could not miss my flight for Katie's birthday. So I got there an hour and a half early, right? Check my shit in, pay the 50 bucks because I'm like, whatever. I thought that they were taking care of it for me. Guess what? Fuck Allegiant in the ass no lube i don't care fuck allegiant i don't care i am not mr nice guy right now i'm pissed it had my birthday okay let me just i'm getting mad So I land at the airport. Sorry, I don't have a voice right now. I land at the airport and I'm sitting at baggage claim. There's only one baggage claim at my airport, mind you. It's a very small airport. Sitting there, everyone's getting their bags and I'm noticing that I'm like waiting there for a long time. I don't see my fucking bag. <laughs> and then I notice that everyone starts to leave the airport and it's a small airport. So I go up to someone, I'm like, hi, I didn't see my bag and baggage claim. Did they stop dropping bags? And they're like, oh yeah, they stopped. And I'm like, I don't know where my bag is. And they're like, oh, sorry, that's not our fault. You're gonna have to like call the airline or LAX or something because it just wasn't on the plane. And I was like, what the fuck? That luggage had my birthday present for Katie in there. It had all my clothes. This is the only clothes that I have. They're my airport clothes. It had 
everything that I needed in that fucking bag. And so I'm like, okay, I call a legion expecting to talk to a human person. I'm talking to a robot for 15 minutes, frustrated, trying to tell them, I need to talk to a person. I'm sorry, we didn't understand what you said. I need to talk to an actual human being with a brain. I'm sorry, did you say? No, I didn't say it. And finally I was able to like talk to someone. It took 20 minutes and then they're like, oh, sorry, um, you're gonna have to call this different number. So I'm like, okay, I dial that number. I get a robot. Hello, welcome to Allegiant. I'm fuming. I'm like, oh my God. They tell me that the wait time to talk to a human, 45 minutes, y'all. You think I have that? So then I go on Google and I type in missing luggage Allegiant. And I find this website called like find my luggage. Like it's kind of like find my iPhone. I don't know, but I'd enter in all of my flight details, the description of my bag and shit. Within five minutes of me submitting that request form, it was through like a third party website too. It wasn't even through Allegiant. Fuck Allegiant. I'm getting a call and I'm like about to have a mental breakdown and I'm hallucinating. Because when I did not see my bag in the baggage claim and everyone was leaving, I was having like an out of body experience where I'm like, I'm so fucking tired right now. I can't handle this. I get a call from LAX and the lady, I know it's the same fucking lady that checked my shit in because I recognized her voice. I know it was that lady. She was like, hi, um, so you're Sarah. We just got a claim about your bag. Apparently your bag didn't make the time for it to be on the plane. It was like at the cutoff time. I'm like, huh? That's not right. That's not correct. That is not correct. Can you go in the system and let me know what time I checked in at? <laughs> and she was like, oh, huh? yeah, I can totally do that for you. She looks in the system. Oh, oh, um, yeah, it says here that you were here an hour and a half early. Hmm, that's so weird. I don't know why they didn't let your bag on the plane. Huh, that's so odd. She's like typing. Huh. So strange. I'm like, yeah, that is strange, Kelly. Why didn't my bag make it on the flight? And she was like, I don't know, that's so weird. They just said that, you know, it just didn't make the, the time. But I see here in my system that you're here on time. I'm like, yeah, Kelly, I know I was on time. I don't know, but like we can ship your bag to you. I'm like, the fuck? Also, this is the angle you're gonna be getting for now. This might be kind of aesthetically pleasing, I don't know, or distracting. Oh my God. There's so many speed bumps. And the windshield wipers keep turning on. My God, can you give me a break? You're just gonna get this angle and I don't care. So basically she just could not hold herself accountable. She couldn't admit that she fucked up because I know it was her. Cause I kept saying, you checked my bag in. Why didn't my bag get on the plane? I apologize for the inconvenience. No, I understand that you apologize for the inconvenience. I just wanna know the logic behind my bag not being on the plane. I have a birthday gift I need to give. And the birthday gift relates to her birthday. Oh. It's gonna be this whole thing on her birthday. Like the fuck? She's like, I apologize for the inconvenience. Just kept saying that. I'm like, okay, so what's next? She's like, we can ship the bag to you. Just give me your address. And I'm like, cool. When will it be here? Tuesday. Her birthday is Monday, so fuck Allegiant. Why did that happen? But whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna get my bag. Like at least I know where the bag is and I know what happened to it, but just really frustrating. I don't know. So I have to like borrow Katie's clothes, borrow her makeup. I'm just like a freeloader, but whatever. I bought her some really cute birthday shit. I went to Spencer's Gifts and I bought her this big mug. It says birthday bitch on it. I bought her a tiara that says birthday bitch on it. I bought her a sash that says birthday bitch on it. It was like this birthday bitch collection. It was really cute. Um, But yeah, I just, wanted to make this video to rant. Thanks for watching. This was a super fucking random video, but I feel better. That was like therapy. But yeah, just why does this keep happening? I don't know, but I'm going to get my luggage. I'm getting a new mattress, so I'm still blessed. These are things that I can figure out, so that's good. All right, love you guys.